and I'll end the corner wash day 428 stay at home to day 37 and before I start off I will just say due to the recent extension uh, people have been complaining the Doug Ford to reopen the province and they won't shut up about it I have seen it on Facebook uh, Instagram. I have seen it on Twitter. It yeah, they're doing they're crazy. No, I know how you feel. Yeah, we want to get this coronavirus out. Yeah, we would just want to go back to our regular regular lives. Yet yeah, we can't let that happen yet, just yet. Why? If the government reopened the province too early. Like say right now, so coronavirus cases will increase. Like they go back up to like four thousand, I guaranteed by Doctor Peter Juni. Yeah, he's a doctor, not like one of those like you know people uh, who work for the government. Yeah, he's a doctor. So and uh, the more people will be affected. ICU ICU cases will patient numbers will go up. And wave four will be upon us sooner than we're ex is expected to come in fall if we don't take care of like what wave three right now and make sure that wave four never even happens. So we can't make. So Dr. Peter Juni said we can't afford to make the same mistakes before, which resulted in wave three happening upon us. And look where, where we're at now. And not just before, not just that, but uh, think about like maybe like you had like a gathering with uh, some people like, like you, you, that you know or like you care about, like maybe family or friends. And just, and in the next few days you, you found out they got coronavirus. Or the variants carried cases and maybe one so you see remember where I'm going with this yeah so don't have any gatherings of any kind especially during Victoria Day because that's the next uh, holidays like break day screw up we're gonna have I guarantee it, there's going to be people breaking the rules, having gatherings, they're popping fireworks together, they're drinking, they're partying, blah, 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 blah. Instead of just keeping with uh, with their own uh, family family members and, or maybe if someone's not living alone, enough, okay, that's fine, but... A large gathering? No, no, no. That's literally making it like worse than it actually is right now. So okay. Today's coronavirus cases. Is at two thousand three hundred sixty two, so slightly lower again than uh, yesterday, yesterday's. But those Toronto Peel region are still in high cases uh, with us six hundred ninety one from uh, Toronto, high cases from Toronto, five sixty three from high cases from Peel region. 224 from York Region, 148 from Durham Region, and 112 from Hamilton. All other regions are reported at under 100, as usual. 26 deaths have been reported. Okay. Yep. 
No, I'm just going to talk about like, uh, yeah, yeah, right before I talk about like, uh, yeah. So there's going to be like, yeah, people are going to be disappointed what, about what I'm going to talk about today. Variant cases, uh, okay, UK variants, uh, okay, worsening at 103,864, which is the big concern, that's the big, largest threat we have right now, at increase, uh, with an increase of, uh, plus 2,632, 594 South African variants, uh, Plus 20, 1,746 uh, Brazilian variants, plus 19, and uh, an India double mutant variant, uh, which the Health Canada still does not consider this as a variant, uh, proper, like a variant like uh, of uh, concern, uh, and only a variant of incident, and they say it's not threatening. But if you look at India, things are different. That's another story. So I think Health Canada should sort of learn from uh, what's uh, happening over uh, in Asia and uh, and uh, specifically in India and. Uh, So even uh, sending, vent sending ventilators uh, over to India to help uh, for the India patient, patients uh, who need, he need them the most, will it make a difference? Slight, maybe, maybe, maybe it will make a difference, but will that get rid of the India variant, double mutant variant? We'll see. But, uh, but 141 from uh, Ottawa and uh, 36 from uh, Brampton, apparently that wasn't concerning enough for them. So, uh, Brampton Mayor uh, Patrick Brown, Ottawa High Health Specialist, uh, Dr. Vera Etches and Premier Doug, Ontario Premier Doug Ford were not happy about what the, what the federal government is doing with and request to changes, which apparently they're not, apparently the federal government is not budging. So my first matter, uh, I want to talk about three things. First one is going to be CNE. You know the Canada the National Ex Exhibition. Uh, people come up, yeah, yeah. The city of uh, Toronto is uh, canceling the, the all major in person. Uh, the, after events until September 6th for a second year in a row. This is uh, because of uh, the coronavirus uh, spreading. Uh, so, uh, so some uh, canceled events, uh, not just the, K the uh, CNE, but uh, the Caribbean Can Carnival, the Honda Indy, and a taste of uh, Danforth that have been cancelled. Uh. So all event organizers were give, given uh, advance notice of the decision and uh, 
and and, and um, organizers have had uh, asked for an early decision on events uh, due due to the logistics uh, and support that uh, going into planning of the event. Uh, So even though like this, the exit CNE was a close of the, the Toronto was giving up full support and uh, so Daryl Brown, who uh, is the executive director uh, for CNE, he said, he said, whatever happens in the next few months will be a watershed moment for the organization that legacy of Canada's largest uh, fair. And of course, uh, he said the loss of uh, revenues uh, totaled up to at least $70 million. But... So, here's, so here's a list of... Uh, I mean, Events that are like not available. So that's Taste of the Middle East, Taste of Lawrence. I'm guessing a uh, Lawrence uh, Avenue, maybe. Honda Indy, Toronto Outdoor Art Fair, Afro Fest, Salsa in Toronto, 49th Annual Fest Festival of India, Bolero West Street uh, Fest. Uh, Beaches Jazz Festival, so downtown Queensway, I guess. Oz Fest, I guess Ossington. Uh, yeah, that, that street it, maybe. So uh, Caribbean uh, Junior Carnival, Sc Scarborough Rib Fest. Of course, they all there's there's always an annual uh, Rib Fest, uh, but we're not gonna have that this year either. I guess. So Kirby and Carvinal, King and Queen competition, uh, Pan, Pan, uh, Olive and uh, Grand Parade, Taste of the Danforth, Danforth Avenue, Vigendale uh, Food and Food Drink Festival, Bollywood Film Fa Fair, Waterfront Night Market, CNE. Mabuhe Philippines Festival, so that's for the, the Philippines uh, people. Uh, uh, Ch Toronto Chinatown Festival, uh, unfortunately, that's going to be canceled too. And Labor Day Parade, so. So officials uh, have said that many of these events will be offered uh, virtually and to contact it. To contact each event organizer directly for more details. So, so this this came after like uh, changes up, you know the the stay at home to extension. So my second uh, off matter uh, topic uh, in uh, matter, you know how like uh, I think it was a month ago uh, I mentioned uh, Church of God in uh, Aylmer, Ontario, to be uh, locked. Uh, and, uh, the, there was a the church, the Church of God. Uh, so, which is the church uh, in Aylmer, Ontario, which is so basically the southwest part of Ontario. Uh, and actually, uh, two, pol two, two police officers from Toronto and and two people from, I think, if, so we have the man from, uh, so two people from North York, one from North York and one, 
and one from a uh, it was Scarborough. Yeah, they were caught uh, going to this church and uh, attending a gathering. And look where they got. So Church of the Church of God, there. This church is like uh, in Aylmer, Ontario, is uh, known for defying uh, coronavirus restrictions. Uh, they'll be temp they're, they are now forced to temporarily lock the, this door while, while the church itself. And also, the pastor and the assistant pastor faced. Forty-eight thousand dollars in fines and sixty-nine thousand dollars in legal costs for breaking coronavirus regulations. So, so they had like gatherings like during February, they had January, February, March, April. Also, uh, May, this, this, so Justice, uh, Bruce, uh, Thomas, uh, said, uh, so he, uh, he and us uh, looked at evidence, uh, which is on, on face, shown on Facebook, uh, so Aylmer police were not happy about this, uh, by the way, yeah. Held on uh, April 25th, that featured like nearly 100 participants without masks. They were not wearing masks or social distancing. And two pro Toronto police officers, uh, they got like, no, yeah. They got busted for doing that. They're technically breaking uh, their... So, Bruce Thomas uh, just... That, uh, then he, today, he said that the, the Church of God will be locked up until gatherings or charged to permit a capacity of 30% or more, which is the time respondents can be bring the matter to the court to find what if any restriction to access the uh, continue to apply so uh, so uh, access will be granted from a necessary inspection maintenance and repairs with uh, with the Elmer police helping out and also church church was fined uh, thirty five thousand dollars. Those were the pastor Henry Hildebrandt fined ten thousand dollars, and the assi assistant pa pastor uh, Peter Wall fined three thousand dollars. So the pastor Henry Hild Hildebrandt uh, is a uh, this is uh, basically labeled as the uh, directing mind of the continuing contempt. And uh, Peter Wall was basically the following the example and direction, uh, basically. Uh, so it's actually doing what they shouldn't, shouldn't be doing. So, yeah. So if uh, people should gather in churches, they should not be, you know, they shouldn't be doing like have large gatherings of any kind or like trying to break rules. Uh, otherwise, that that's going to happen. Now I think uh, this is a one my third medal. Of, this is, affects everyone internationally. Basically, any Olympians. Hence the like thumbnail photo. So. So, you know how last year, in 2020, we can't we canceled the to Tokyo uh, Olympics and the to Tokyo Paralympics 
last year because coronavirus cases are really kicking up and uh, it was dangerous uh, and we shouldn't have, uh, we shouldn't do this uh, we should sort of we should postpone it to next year well we're gonna pay we might have to postpone it next year so so there was an online uh, So, so uh, there was an online petition uh, with more than uh, three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. So, so three hundred fifty thousand people s signed this petition, calling for the Tokyo uh, Olympic Games to uh, Olympics to be canceled today to local organizations. Organizers, uh, the International uh, Olympic Committee, you know, the people who run the, Olymp the Olympics, uh, summer, summer Olympics and Winter Olympics, yeah, and others. Uh, so it was support, the, Olymp the Olympics were supposed to start on July 23rd. Uh, In the midst of a pandemic with Tokyo and other areas under state of a uh, so Japan is technically under a state of emergency uh, so cases uh, are uh, in Japan are not uh, rising right now and uh, so we're less than two people two percent of the population has been fully vaccinated so the petition is called stop Tokyo Olympics uh, well well well, this, which was dra drafted by the well-known lawyer uh, Kenji uh, Ustomi, uh, yeah. So who is the uh, who is the uh, government who is run? So uh, Japan Japanese dude uh, who is the uh, lawyer who is the uh, run for the government of Tokyo and uh, and of course uh, he thought. Uh, And he said that the he said the thing he thinks that media coverage puts a lot of pressure on the the international uh, Olympic Committee, the International Paralympic Committee, the Japanese government, the Tokyo Metropolitan uh, Government, and the organizing committee. So can. Can you restore me? Yeah, yeah, he's right. Yeah, he's right. I think the Olympics should be canceled again until like when coronavirus cases actually died down. And of course, uh. And he said that the Olympics would would uh, would divert medical services from general uh, public. Uh, from the general public, uh, which uh, which is a big concern because because as hospitals uh, come under strains uh, that uh, that could get worse uh, as soon as the Olympics uh, start. So it was originally said organizers and I, the Olympic Committee said they will hold the games safely, isolating fifteen thousand four hundred Olymp Olympic and Paralympic athletes uh, in a bubble and re and repeatedly repeatedly test coronavirus testing them, and the tens of thousands of other uh, judges, staff, sponsors, media, and broadcasters who will enter. A who, who entered Japan, who, which, so if you look at Japan's coronavirus case, it's comparing it to Taiwan and South Korea, it's just disappointing. So J Japan had uh, about uh, 
it had uh, about 11,000 uh, coronavirus deaths uh, to, uh, yeah. There have been other countries like uh, uh, Taiwan, South Korea, Singapore, Hong, Hong Kong, China. I think Thailand was one of them. Yeah. So Japan apparently their their cases may have looked low, but they have actually their cases are actually like uh, higher than the uh, the what like uh, the current the international rankings actually did show. So. So you got to think about that. So and the, re the reason that the Olympic Games might happen is that uh, you know Japan, you know they're bri you know bri bribing people like oh yeah let's let's do, let's do this it's fine it's fine it's fine because they're known for doing stuff like that. So British School Medical Journal said the games might be reconsidered, so... So, uh, the, the Olympic Committee selling, relied on selling broadcast the rights for almost 75% of the income, 18% from, um, from sponsors, and Japan has officially spent fifteen four point four billion to organize the Olympics. Uh, so, uh, so Saiko. Uh, Hashimoto, uh, the president of the Tokyo uh, Organizing Committee, uh, she uh, the, was asked, uh, uh, about the Japan's uh, stretched medical system, uh, on Friday, well, technically, uh, Asia had, uh, got like 14 hours earlier-ish. So organizers have said that several times they knew they will need uh, 10,000 medical participants to staff the Olympics, but but uh, Hashimoto said that hedging his time on uh, numbers and the size of staff needed. Uh, So the big concern is like there's going to be a whole bunch of people from across the world, world, in Tokyo, Japan, for some Olympics, and who knows might get the who might get the coronavirus again. That's my concern. So apparently, uh, two places up, uh, yeah. Ibaraki and Chiba said, yeah, uh, apparently they're not going to able to treat Olympic participants who fail ill to coronavirus. Uh, and uh, Kanagawa also said the same thing, exactly similar. No, this is just no, 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 no. So today's hospitalization that uh, is uh, yeah. 
is uh, 1582. Okay, that's better. Minus 50. 777 uh, ICU patient uh, plus one. Get bad. 560 uh, vent on a ventilator. Minus eight. Corner long term care home uh, death is at 3,765 now. The staff does. 13, 13 staff deaths have increased now, unfortunately, and uh, and 36 uh, outbreaks right now. So that's anything that's changed. Uh, I hope they put, they postpone the Olympics or yeah or cancel it because I am opposed with it. I I think people should have the same idea, right? I mean, like, there's a lot of like Olymp Olympians who really want to like, uh, you know, reach for the, like, you know, get a gold medal or silver medal or a bronze medal. But looking at like, the conditions right now, I think that's not going to happen anytime soon. So, you know, vaccination rules, stay at home rules, damn thing. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna have to say anything again. You know, you know uh, everything. I, I'm gonna say so. Just stay safe, and I hope they postpone the Olympics or cancel it. We're not ready yet.